email, there is actually a t almost a 28 um, a 28 times greater likelihood of defaulting on your loan, and this is important, controlling for individual differences in annual salary. It is incorrect to say that males are 28 percent are 28 times more likely to default on their loan. They are not, as an absolute statement, more likely to default on their loan equal 28 uh, times. This is only interpretable in the context of the fact that there's another variable in the equation, and it's annual salary. Now, annual salary is also uh, positively correlated with gender. Males tend to make more money than females on average. but Je annual salary is actually negatively associated with the probability of defaulting on a loan. So when you mix that type of interaction of associations, you get something called a suppressor effect. And I kind of regret, in some sense, I, uh, using that as an example uh, in a logistic regression is, is unfortunate because it's called a suppressor effect. Um, and what I'll show you here is something. Uh, first, I'll do the. I'll do the just to really push the point home that males are not 28 times more likely to default on the loan. I mean, that would be enormous. That would be amazing uh, if they were. I mean, that would be the number one question you ask them once they entered a bank is, you know, are you a male? No, you're not getting a loan. Um, so let's look at the model when it's gender and credit default alone. So now I've taken annual salary out of the regression equation and we can see that it's actually four times. Males in this fictitious data, I don't know exactly how what percentage greater, I just know that there's some pu data published out there that shows that males are more likely to default on on loans and I know there's research showing that males w earn more money than male than females. In, in this case based on the abs in an absolute sense, males are four times greater to default on a loan than females and it's statistically significant. Uh, the, but the 28 uh, times greater likelihood is a, is a function of this suppressor effect. And um, what I'll do is actually something that you should probably always do, and I didn't do this now. I would normally, as a natural course, do this uh, before I ran my analysis, uh, is sh look at the correlations between my variables. Why not? Uh, a dichotomous variable is something you can use in correlations. So. If I do the correlations, what you'll find is annual salary is correlated with credit default at negative 0.3. So the higher your salary, the lower your credit default likelihood is measured 0, 1. This is a point by serial correlation. It's not an odds ratio phenomenon. Uh, gender, on the other hand, is only correlated at 0.19 with credit default. So it would be wrong to interpret that regression equation and the output associated with it in such a way, and this proves the point very clearly, that annual salary is a better predictor of credit default than gender is. But when you look at the uh, output that uh, we get from the logistic regression, you would be mis you would think no, that's not true. It really is true. We can see the ex uh, the odds ratio for annual salary is 0.74, so about 25 a one unit a one unit increase in salary, which is a thousand dollars, is associated with about a 25 percent reduction in the probability of uh, or 26 percent reduction in uh, in the probability of uh, defaulting on your loan. Uh, and that's the challenge with this, and this is true in multiple regression as well, uh, is the challenge of interpreting the importance of predictive uh, variables. Uh, just looking at unstandardized beta weights, you can't do it. And that in multiple regression, you're taught that quite clearly. And it's also true, I would argue, and other people argue too, what odds ratios. It becomes very complicated. Something that's missing uh, from... The, uh, a table like this is, if you're familiar with multiple regression, is standardized beta weights. Why don't we have standardized beta weights so that we can have a greater ability to compare the importance of variables in a uh, regression uh, model, logistic regression. In multiple regression, we often focus substantially on the, on the beta weights of a multiple regression. And yes, there are caveats associated with that, and I've covered that in the multiple regression. Uh, arguably, semi-partial correlations might be better. 
But even semi-partial correlations themselves are standardized, but um, odds ratios are not, and nor are unstandardized uh, beta weights here, which are based on the logits. Um, there is a way, however, to calculate uh, standardized beta weights for logistic regression, and I'll show that in another video. In fact, what I'll show is how to calculate semi-standardized semi, uh, beta weights. And what will become clear, again, is that salary is a more important um, contributor to predicting um, uh, default than gender is, but you just wouldn't get that idea from this. Um, so I, I think this is a great example of of, of how to be careful in interpreting um, a, a logistic regression, and just like a multiple regression, and to at least always look at your correlation matrix, and I would do that before I even started. But I didn't want to give away what was going on. And again, when you have this kind of pattern of correlations, you get a suppressor effect. You might want to look that up on the Internet. I'm not going to talk too much about it. Uh, but there's basically a suppressor effect in here. And I suspect that's exactly what you would get if you had legitimate credit default data. Because annual salary is negatively correlated with that. Gender is positively correlated with credit default. And annual salary and gender are positively correlated with each other themselves. Uh, now, there's... Uh, in addition to unstandardized beta weights, I haven't talked about predicted probabilities uh, that can be calculated in your data set, but I've calculated them. And I think I'm going to end that, the, the video here. And if you're interested in how these are, are created, and I think you do get substantial insight into exactly what's going on here in your model uh, to do that. And ultimately, if you want to build a model anyway, you're going to have to really understand your, your regression equation and how that works to actually generate uh, predicted uh, pro probabilities. But I'll end the value, uh, the uh, the uh, uh, video here, and I hope you enjoyed it and learned a few things along the way. Thanks.